Hey, what's up, y'all? Sam Slim here. Back with a movie review. The first movie review that I did for 2021. And the last movie I did, which I finally uploaded, was The Night Before, which was on Christmas Eve. That was the last movie I've ever... I mean, I've watched movies before. I I mean, this year, but haven't really reviewed one and put it on my channel. Until now. Now the thing is though about this review, this review is kind of half-assed. And the reason why I say half-assed is because I it's I watched it yesterday. And I think if you were want to do a movie review, do it after the movie's over. Because the thoughts process and everything, you know. Well, this one right here though, I was not going to do a review. Because the reason why is that I fell asleep maybe like 10 minutes of this, 15 minutes of this film. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But we're going to talk about it anyway. I don't care. Half ass or not. My thoughts about this film. And that's Willy's Wonderland. Now Willy's Wonderland. What did I hear first heard about this film? Well, I heard about the whole Five Nights at Freddy's thing. Which my son's got into. My son Ronnie loves that shit. But now he's kind of grown out of it in a way. But um. It has the premise of this. And it has fucking Nicholas fucking Cage. Now, this is actually, I think, I, I think this is my first low-budget Nicholas Cage film that I think I've ever seen. I know he's been doing some shitty movies. Remember here, though? But after watching this film with Nicholas Cage, it made me want to watch more of his crappy, low-budget movies. And maybe just want to, like, you know, I want to have the thoughts and just, like, just, like, wow... This movie right here, though, Willy's Wonderland, on paper, this film, I mean, Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage, uh, a guy uh, who fight, uh, fights off animatronics. And that right there, I mean, right there, like I said, on paper, it, it looks like it's going to be a badass film, you know. Well, it's good on paper, right? But when this film goes, I mean, come on. It's kind of like I was watching. I was re watching Anger Joe's review of this film, and this thing's mostly. It's like it's. I mean, yes, it's Bugim esque. It's you know the Five Nights at Freddy name, you know, but it's not. I'm fucking. I think it'd be good. And plus, also Nicolas Cage is a fucking mute gender. He's a drifter. He's the what? what like oh, people were like writing this film. And the thing is, don't I don't have any. any I don't have any info. I don't have the director's name. Sorry, I don't care because I told you it was a half-ass review. But the thing is, though, I don't understand how... Nicholas Cage doesn't say nothing. The only thing you hear... <clears throat> or you hear when he's drinking his punch, his caffeine drink. <clears throat> That's all he hears is his expressions, his sighing, his... <clears throat> he doesn't say anything. It's like ASMR. It's like body language. That's how he talks. Is his body language, and, and then he's, I don't know. I could go on and on and off. It's just, I like I said, this movie would be good on paper. This movie was good on paper, but in the film, which I thought, you know, it's gonna be great, and then I'm watching this shit, and then like there, and then you don't get the story. You get the backstory in the middle of the film. And whatnot, because there's main two topics here. There's main, there's two story. Well, there's there, there's this two. What's that word I'm trying to say? I'm not a good reviewer, but there's there's two main people on here. I mean, you got Nicholas Cage's gender character, and then you got the chick. Well, I forgot her name. Oh well, I don't care. Uh, but she's there, and I guess she was one of the family, one of the ex family survivor members of the place. Maybe hell, I don't know. Because an older caretaker woman did it. She's the well, she was a caretaker for her. But the thing is, though, let's just go for it. You know, I, I don't care. This is going to be hopefully not that quick. Hopefully not that long. Um, but no, I mean... You have him as a fucking janitor. No, you have him just drifting. And he gets hit by those one who's spike traps. You know, and... Basically, these spike traps are, spoiler alert, are for these fucking people and families to get fucking sacrificed by these so-called fucking people. 
But they have this abandoned uh, Jade and Tex. Tex is the owner of this Willie's Wonderland. And they tell uh, Nicholas Cage, "Oh, if you get, if you clean up this whole night, I'll get you a brand new car." You know. So basically, Nicholas Cage is this fucking Clint Eastwood Walker Texas Ranger mute, and the motherfucker he's like a god on here. And the thing is, though, when it first starts to hit, when he first gets in there and stuff, when the lights go up, the animatronics come alive. And that's just what, this is when I'm like, okay, there's, I, I, I don't care. When it start, first just, they just start being alive and going after him, and cheesy fucking stupid fun, Nicholas Cage is just beating the shell of these fucking animatronic motherfuckers. And the blood's cool, it's the gore's alright. People think it's kind of maybe disgusting, but I don't really care. I mean, I don't, it was all right, but it was just too fucking stupid and retarded. So what, 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 the, the director's like, well, what else do we need in this film? No, we need to get some kids in here. We need some sacrificial lambs from these fucking animatronic people. Because the, the, the girl's trying to, she wants to burn it down because she's one of the survivors, I believe. She wants to burn the some bitch down. And they... And what you find out later in the film is that um, it was ran by, the, what was Wonderland was ran by these fucking Jerry Lewis or whatever, these cannibalistic killers and shit, and they would have a, like, unexpected family members go in their super fun room, and then that's where they would take advantage, that, that's where they would kill the parents and the kids. And supposedly the the cops found out about. They go in the super fun room. They find out all of Jerry Lewis, the killer, and his buddies, the cannibal, his cannibalistic buddies, put, did some stupid satanic pact, fucking truce or whatever that made them like oh that made the, um, them turn into the animatronics. Their spirits turn into animatronics. These murderous animatronics. And that's the part where I fell asleep, and I found I was searching on YouTube just to think, what's going on, you know, and then, yeah, that's the main reason. And then you had these certain, it's like, like a view, view game mask. Nick's Cage has these breaks that, doo -doo, where if he's in the middle of a fight or anything, it, it, he just goes back to his break room and plays the, pin, the pinball machine and drinks his punch caffeine drink. And it's throughout the whole film. And it's like, okay, that was all right. But I don't know. But the, the fucking, this thing, he's a, he goes after every single one of them. And Willie's the last fucking one. Which Willie gives him a challenge. Willie's the only animatronic on here that gives him a fucking challenge. Yeah, there's, and I, I, I realize there's there's eight of them. I mean, you got a fucking fairy, fair and bitch. Fairy. You got a gorilla who just comes out of nowhere in the bathroom with, with Nicolas Cage. You got... The, the ostrich is the first one that gets sacrificed, gets killed by Nicholas Cage. I mean, there's so many, but an alligator, and then there's a fucking Mexican one. Who's a motherfucker? What? I don't know. But Willie, the last one, is the only fucking animatronic that is cha that, that that hits and hurts Nicholas Cage for a, for a little bit of time. But he comes back though, and he destroys everybody. And he and then like, oh wow. I mean, if, I wouldn't mind if he destroyed it. If he if he destroyed it, but I don't care. But my God, can we have more purpose of the story? I mean, yeah, you get this story in the middle of the fucking movie here, but I don't know. I don't care. And then James Jet Tex come. Tex gets his new car and doesn't believe that Nicholas Cage cleaned everything up and did not give a shit. Gets his car and then. And Jack's like, oh, it's falling over. And they don't realize that the fucking fairy bitch is still alive. Well, she ends up sacrificing herself and kills them both. And that's the fucking end. And supposedly this young chick wants to suck Nicolas Cage's dick. This fucking teenager, whatever the fuck she is. Or maybe, I don't know what it is because she ends up going with them. So maybe she's a very legal 18 teen and she wants some grown man dick. She wants a fucking 50 year old. So, well, I don't know. I don't understand. Oh, who knows? But that is it. I mean, the gore was kind of okay. It was all right. Uh, the acting, I mean, no. I don't, I mean, Nicholas Cage. Uh, uh, it's like an ASMR movie, but 
it made me want to watch more of his films, more of his low budget films. I don't care. I mean, my favorite, hell, my favorite car movie, which I still haven't reviewed yet, is Gun 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage. That's my favorite, that's probably one of my favorite car movies or stealing or whatever, or anything with cars. That's my favorite movie, Gone in 60 Seconds. But yeah, I just want to talk about the film. I, I thought, like I said at the end, I'll say it again, like I said again, looking at on the DVD and everything, you think, oh, this is going to be so fucking badass. But then again, when you, then you re watch the fucking tape and you're like, shit, what the fuck did I get myself into? Sorry guys, I know it was a kind of a shitty ass, half ass review, but I'm hoping that will bring back my love for movies because... Being watching movies, you're the jury, jury, you're the jury, judge, and executioner in these films. So, the jury part, you can feel. You, you, um, when I talk, the jury part is that you can feel for one of these characters. You can have the right. The judge is okay. But more, well, I'm trying to make sense here. The jury is will probably be okay. Would well, you see yourself in these characters? But then again, the judge, though, the judger, he's the guy who's going to be, well, that, he judges the characters. Or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. But executioner, when I say executioner, is my, the ranter. Of like, okay, see all this shitty shit. But yeah, Wooly's Wonderland, I only recommend it if you're a Nicolas Cage fan. Um, definitely not rewatchable, though. But I only recommend it for Nicolas Cage, if you're a Nicolas Cage buff fan, check it out. Uh, it's probably, it, but like I said, this is my first low-budget film of Nicolas Cage, and I feel like I'm gonna watch. I want to watch more. So, but I'm STS. We'll see you again soon. Slammed up the reviews.